Hi guys, so I'm looking at the nuclear power plant in South Carolina as per the previous video and I'm seeing that Hurricane Florence or Tropical Storm Florence at this time will be passing over that area and dumping uh, quite a lot of water around the area. Now I don't think the water from the hurricane is specifically going to be the problem. I think we're going to have a, basically a similar 9-11 event in terms of a, a demolition a controlled demolition of the Jocasey Dam. Now looking at the map, the Jocasey Dam is located up here. It's 300 feet above um, the Onconi nuclear power station. So obviously if the dam fails here, the water that's being held back is going to flow down the river in what you could term as a, a wall of water. I mean 300 feet up that will come crashing down um, elevation levels going down all the way to the Kiowe Dam, which is holding back this body of water. And obviously this body of water combined with this body of water would obviously overflow this dam quite severely. And then you've got the Onconi nuclear power station right, right there. So it seems to me that there may be a scenario during the uh, hurricane or tropical storm Florence where the Jocasey Dam fails and causes a body of water, large body of water, almost like a tsunami, crashing down into the Kiowe Dam and then that fails as well and both bodies of water end up coming crashing down. Obviously there's another dam down here called Little River, that one will probably fail as well. So you've got a series of dams that will fail one after the other. Uh, starting with the Jocasey Dam up here and the nuclear power station that is in its way would be the Onconi power station which uh, has obviously been reported as having some serious issues um, one of those issues being uh, flood walls that are not high enough to guard against a scenario like that so this is a report that was published in 2013 several US nuclear power plants including one in Onconi County could face major problems including public exposure if a, new, if a nearby dam were to fail, according to a newly released report. The Public Employees for Environmental Responsibility released documents Monday that it had received from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, including a July 2011 report on flooding at power plant sites after upstream dam failures. The report looked at 32 reactors at 20 sites across the country and found the flooding danger largely ignored by federal regulators. Another document that the NRC gave here was a September 18, 2012 letter from NRC Reliability and Risk Engineer Lawrence Briscone to the Commission Chair outlining detailed concerns about the vulnerability of the free reactor on Connie nuclear complex. The letter said in the event of dam failure on Connie's five foot flood wall could be swamped by more than 16 feet of water. There are two dams near the on Connie nuclear uh, station, including an adjacent dam for Lake Kiowee whose full pond level is about the same as the station's. 11 miles upstream is a dam for Lake Jocasey, which is 300 feet higher than Lake Kiowee. And that's what we we're just talking about when we're looking at the map there. Peer Council Catherine Douglas said, federal regulators are not doing enough to address such risks. By postponing corrective action, the NRC is play, uh, playing Russian roulette with public safety and the American economy, merely hoping the right disastrous combination of credible events does not line up. She said, adding, noting that the NRC is still withholding portions of other documents on the issue. The July 2011 report noted several uncertainties exist. Uh, sorry, several uncertainties exist with regards to the risk posed to the Onconi nuclear station due to upstream dam failure. In particular, uncertainty exists about the flood levels at the site that would result from failure of the Jocasey Dam. Duke Energy Commission's uh, communications manager B. J. Gatton said Monday that Onconi does have interim actions in place such as barriers and equipment ready to respond to protect the site in the unlike unlikely event of a Jocasey dam failure. Those actions have been deemed to be adequate. Still, Gatton said Duke Energy is working with the NRC to see if further steps are warranted. We're still working with the NRC to confirm the flooding design values. She said, we're not just waiting around. So bear in mind that even though they're saying that they, the people that run the site, deem the protections to be adequate, that doesn't include increasing the flood walls, uh, the height of the flood walls, that just means putting interim actions in place such as barriers and equipment ready to respond but not to prevent.
you know, the site from having a possible nuclear meltdown in the event of flooding from the Joffa Sea Dam. So, Douglas said the federal government has yet to come to grips with the dangers of flood-induced core meltdowns, a type of disaster seen in Fukushima, Japan, following a March 2011 tsunami. This past week, Colorado experienced the combination of flooding, dam washouts and record rainfall, which, if upstream of a reactor, could produce cataclysmic consequences. The report also mentioned the H.B. Robinson nuclear site in Hartsville, but not South Carolina's other nuclear site, the Virgil C. Summer Nuclear Generating Station in Jenkinsville. Other southern nuclear sites included in the report were those in Athens. Oh, well, I'll just let you read these on screen. So these are the other sites where the report noted some concerns in regards to nuclear power safety, or at least the, the safety of the sites. Um, another leaked report, this is what that report was referencing. This was leaked to the Huffington Post in 2012. And it's basically a coverage of the same thing. Um, it gives a little bit more information. For example, if there was a uh, nuclear meltdown at the Onconi nuclear power site, um, it, it would probably take around 10 hours for that to happen. So looking around the time where Florence is kind of affecting Jocacy, that's kind of like on the 16th. That would be throughout the day. This is uh, GMT time, so 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, we're talking about, uh, what is it? Eight o'clock in the morning um, on the east coast is when this site will start to kind of experience the effects of Florence, and then obviously through the seventeenth, it's kind of passed by. And what I find strange about this Florence is it's not really dying as it's gone inland. Most hurricanes would have been dead around here. This one is sweeping well inland, even though it's not a hurricane. They're still tracking it as a a tropical storm and they track it all the way up around the 18th we've got new york it's in that vicinity dropping loads of water around there and obviously you know we've got a lot going on <laughs> and i'll say that and it just doesn't even give you know credit to what is going on at the moment there is too much going on too many things to look at you know it's a bit overwhelming in, in some aspects but I am keeping an eye on the Jocacy Dam. I'm keeping an eye on that being like the potential 9-11, a controlled demolition of the dam, resulting in the flooding coming down to the uh, Kiowi uh, Dam, which will then flood the Onconi site. And all these names, they are from the Native Americans, um, the Cherokee. And uh, I don't know if the masked guy in this video that jumps off the or dives off the ledge here if he represents a Cherokee because I mean I'm just trying to think about it in a slightly different way because if this is you know representing maybe New York up here um, and maybe Florida down here where the school is then this tsunami is obviously coming from the other side and we've associated that with the west coast but what if it's associated with this dam if you compare the height of if this represents this clock tower represents big ben big ben in real life is about 93 feet tall um so if you're kind of to one and maybe three you're kind of looking at over 300 feet in in scale reference in terms of the size of this body of water that's moving forward and obviously as mentioned in that report Jocacy Dam is kind of 300 feet above the Onconi nuclear power site <coughs> excuse me and I do believe in the background here this is a nuclear reactor with this all this orange go around it and all this smoke coming out of it showing a, a nuclear meltdown so and and also obviously with double layers of meaning showing a volcanic eruption at the same time so there is maybe some significance to this site and I'm going to watch it to see if anything like that happens. Um, the span of watch, obviously I'm going to take it from today up until the 18th, watching that site, seeing if anything occurs there in association with what we talked about in this video. Um, and possible references again with the kind of body language of George Bush um, in reference to the tsunami. This could be 
you know, the explosion at the dam and the dam walls breaking. And then after that, the tsunami wave coming or a wave coming down. You know, there's always multiple layers of interpretation with this video. That's the problem. If it was uh, easy, it would, you know, be done by now. But because we can look at it in so many different ways and that's the way they've intended it, it does make it a bit difficult to pinpoint exactly what it could be referencing here, there and everywhere, you know. But that's why I just put out all, <laughs> all the interpretations. Whatever it, I'm thinking, I'll just make a video about it, present it and uh, wait. And that's what I've been doing um, for a while now. So another site to watch wasn't on my original radar, but in the last couple of days with all these reports about the nuclear power plants being in the path of Hurricane Florence, um, and then the focus on the Brunswick nuclear power plant, then I've kind of been led to the Onconi nuclear power plant, realizing the Jokosi Dam could pose a potential flood risk if the dam fails, and then realizing that reports about it were published in 2013 and 2012, um, and haven't really been talked about since. So, you guys, have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and may the Heavenly Father bless you.